Hello everyone, welcome back to the garden. It's mid-June of 2021 and today I want to take you on a full garden tour of our in-ground garden. So we'll start with our tomatoes. You're looking at a brandywine tomato here and I use these tree tags on the cages just for ease, uh, ease of reference. That way I don't have to bend over to look at the stakes in the ground. But that's going really well. Behind it we have, it's windy as usual out here, um, <laughs> We have a black brandy wine, which if you haven't grown black brandy wine, it's pretty much like the name suggests. It gives you everything the brandy wine gives you, and then um, all the smoky and kind of rich flavor of a black tomato. So these are about two, two and a half feet apart, give or take, left to right, front to back, maybe 18 inches. And, and that spacing works out really well for us. There's 12 tomatoes in this row, um, you know, maybe like a 20 foot row. This is Thorburn's Lemon Blush. Um, this is one we've never grown before, so I'm really excited to see how this comes out. Um, it's looking good and healthy there. Behind it is our tried and true Thorburn's Terracotta. I made a video on that last summer, uh, so that one's nice. These square cages are really nice because they give you um, a lot of room for the plants to grow. This one is a Lincoln, which is an old heirloom tomato. Just a nice red slicer. We'll make a video on all these that, that we don't already have on the channel. This is chocolate pear, a new one to us as well. I've grown the, the yellow pear and we had really, really good yields, but I didn't care for the flavor so much. But I think chocolate pear sounds interesting. We'll find out. This one's another new one to us, Evil Olive. I saw this in the Baker Creek catalog. It's like a really uh, firm green tomato. It already has a couple tomatoes on it, so that's pretty fun. I'm excited to see how this one comes out. Uh, the description said it was kind of crunchy even when ripe, so it's kind of interesting sounding. Uh, behind that we have Black Crim, which I don't think I made a video last year, so I'll make a video of that this year. Another classic, delicious, dark slicing tomato. Then we have Blue Beauty, my favorite, I think. Um, made a plenty of videos on those. Um, this one looking nice, flowering already. All these tomatoes do pretty well out here in this row. Uh, I don't usually rotate them as much as maybe I should. This one's Cherokee Purple. Made a video on that last year as well. Got a lot of comments of people saying it's not really Cherokee Purple. Sort of interesting, but um, Rapunzel, which is another one we made a video on before. It's a, a, a sort of a grape-shaped cherry tomato. Really good, a nice sweetness. We got a little bit of early blight there. We, we had a crazy spring, so everything's a little bit behind where it should be because we had, May was totally backwards. We had a really, really, really warm early May, and then when we got to the end of May, it got really cold. It was like in the 30s at night, every single night, and the highs in like the mid 40s certain days. Um, this is St. Pierre, which I also made a video on. So that's our tomato row. And everything's uh, catching up nicely. You know, the nice thing about these is it's mid-June now. They've been in the ground about three weeks. I planted them a couple days after Memorial Day, I think. Um, some on Memorial Day, some a couple days later. Um, just because we were building that fence in the back and that sort of took all of our time. But here's sort of a, a wide angle view of the garden, the in-ground garden. So I have an in-ground garden with some permanent paths. And then I've got it surrounded by these um, containers, so you sort of maximize the space. These are all 30-gallon fabric pots. That's a Cherokee Purple. This is Paprika, the Hungarian Paprika Pepper. You can see some of those are kind of yellow. They're, they didn't like that the cold um, in, in late May, and so they, they're trying to bounce back now. This is Paul Robeson, a fun old tomato. Santa Fe peppers. These ones are a little bit more yellow than the others, although they're starting to turn green now. Now that they got the roots in there, good. This is a container of tomatillo. There's four plants in there. Tomatillos are really fun. If you haven't grown them, they're really rewarding, super easy. Um, very, very productive plants. This is black cherry, which is just a small dark cherry tomato. Really um, tasty. Then we have Sugar Baby Watermelon, the Sugar Bush uh, from Burpee. We grew that last year. That's the one we made the video on. Just in a 30-gallon grow bag, they, these, um, these fabric pots. That's French Fingerling Potatoes. 
And then we've got a few pots right here of wax beans, different um, varieties. A um, couple French ones, and then there's like a, a red striped version. I can't remember the name exactly. Then we've got a pepper called Pretty and Sweet, which is interesting because it's like those tiny, tiny hot peppers you always see, but supposedly they're a sweet version. Then we've got a few pots of collard greens. Need to thin them, but what's nice about that is you can just snip a piece off, you know, munch on it. We eat a lot of greens, so we grow a lot of them. Then we have some red okra, some more collards, um, some more, the, oh, these are uh, blue kale, which is a really good kale to grow. More heat resistant than the curly one, seems to get bitter. This is a chimansai, I think you pronounce it, I'm not exactly sure. We've never grown it. Uh, it was in the Baker Creek catalog. See this damage here, if you ever see that, um, that's bird damage actually we've got a our entire garden is surrounded so animals can't get in but the birds will get in there and peck your young uh, plants they can actually do a surprising amount of damage we used to get that on our upstairs balcony garden all the time um, and obviously it wasn't rabbits up there it was just uh, birds landing and pecking um, that was heavy hitter okra and then we have butternut squash and then blue beauties that are left over. Those are 100 gallon pots. Here's our garlic. Uh, you saw us plant this uh, last fall and made a video of it. We'll harvest that probably mid July or so. Uh, actually, I'm about to make another video about the garlic scapes, those little parts with the flower on the end. You want to cut those off, these right here. Um, and when you cut those off, it'll the, the plant will put all of its energy into the bulb instead of making flowers and seeds. So that'll be our next video, but that's our garlic patch. Next to the garlic, we have our onions, all different varieties. Um, we've got the Tropiana Lunga, the Red of Florence, the Weathersfield Red, Walla Walla, and Stuttgarter. All in there. There's probably about 150 onion plants in there. It's a seven foot wide row, and there's probably 15 feet of them, something like that. And then finally in the ground, we have some squash. So we've got two lemon squash, which I've never grown, but they're like a small yellow squash. Then we've got a yellow zucchini and a green zucchini. So that's our back row. And then finally in the middle, we have a lot of pepper plants. Now these took a long time to get going. That, that late May kind of like cold snap did a number on these guys when they were out here. So they're just recovering. It's only been a couple weeks really. But they're starting to green up nicely and get going. You can see there, they're nice green color. They're just not doing much yet because they're just trying to get their roots established. That's a row of scallions. Those are red scallions, a blushing bunch, they're called. Just a look at our soil. We've really worked the soil. This was just yard um, five years ago. This is the fifth year. Um, so we've been working on it little by little. Then our cucumbers, we've got Early Fortune, and I put them in these same square cages to grow just to save space. Early Fortune's a really nice one, lives up to its name uh, really well. It's a good early cucumber. Then white cucumber. Then we've got another row of scallions. I'll just kind of tuck scallions in wherever I can fit them, um, because you know, they grow quickly and then you just pull them and use them as needed. This is lemon cucumber, which is a round yellow cucumber. It's not sour or anything. It's actually nice and sweet. It's just round and yellow, so that's where it gets its name. And then sikkim cucumber, which we made a video on last year. That one's more like a melon, sort of like a Himalayan cucumber. Um, really fun, cool, unique looking plant. So that's pretty much the tour of our in-ground garden. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're excited to share some more updates as the summer goes on. And we look forward to seeing you again soon.